from Pacifica, this is Democracy Now! Collectively, this group led by my office is posting a reward of $1 million for information that will lead to Mr. Dorner's capture. We will not tolerate anyone undermining the security, the tranquility of our neighborhoods and our communities. As the manhunt continues for former Los Angeles police officer Christopher Dorner, the city offers its largest reward ever for the man accused of killing three. In his online manifesto, Dorner threatened to wage unconventional and asymmetrical warfare against a police department he accused of racism and corruption. We'll speak with journalist Davey D. Then the United States ratchets up its economic war against Iran ahead of this month's nuclear talks. I want to underscore to Iran. The window for diplomacy is still open. And we have agreed to meet Iran again in two weeks in Kazakhstan. We've made our position clear. The choice is really ultimately up to Iran. We'll speak with Trita Parsi, president of the National Iranian American Council, and in a Black History Month special, historian Barbara Ransby on Islanda, the large and unconventional life of Mrs. Paul Robeson. All that and more coming up. Welcome to Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. The Vatican's announced Pope Benedict will step down as head of the Catholic Church later this month. The surprise move makes Benedict the first pontiff to resign in nearly six centuries. Benedict's papacy has been marked by a rightward bent on a range of issues and a number of child molestation scandals in the Catholic Church, including allegations he ignored at least one case of abuse while serving as a cardinal. In a statement, Benedict, who's 85, cited ill health as the reason for his departure. A conclave to elect a new pope will be held by the end of March. President Obama is reportedly preparing to announce new reductions to the country's arsenal of nuclear weapons. In his State of the Union address Tuesday night, Obama is expected to announce plans to cut the number of deployed warheads to just over 1,000, a third reduction from the current number of around 1,700. A former Los Angeles police officer accused of killing three people after posting a revenge manifesto online remains on the loose in California. On Friday, the Los Angeles Police Department announced it would reopen a probe into the incident that caused the former officer, Christopher Dorner, to lose his job. Dorner was fired from the LAPD in 2008 for making false statements after he complained his training officer had kicked a mentally ill suspect during an arrest. In a statement announcing the new investigation, LAPD Chief Charlie Beck said Dorner's claim would be reexamined in light of the department's legacy of racism and abuse. At a news conference, LAPD Commander Andrew Smith said the police department isn't seeking to appease Dorner, but encouraging transparency. He's not opening it because of the uh, accusations or because of the musings of someone who's, uh, who's a multiple murderer now. He's doing it because he wants to ensure that the public knows that the Los Angeles Police Department is fair and transparent. On Sunday, Los Angeles Mayor Antonio Viragosa announced a record $1 million reward for information leading to Dorner's capture. We'll have more on the story after headlines. At least nine people were killed in the weekend blizzard that swept large parts of the Northeast. The storm brought over three snow to some areas and knocked out electricity to hundreds of thousands of people, mostly in Massachusetts and Connecticut. Many are still without power, roads and public transit were shut down in Boston, which saw its first travel ban since 1978. Another storm is now brewing across the northern plains, bringing more snow and high winds. A series of tornadoes, meanwhile, has hit areas of Alabama and Mississippi, injuring at least 10 people and badly damaging hundreds of homes and buildings. Syria's capital of Damascus is seeing its heaviest violence in over six months as government forces and rebel fighters battle for control of a key highway. The fighting in Damascus comes as rebels have also launched offensives in several Syrian areas. Activists with the local coordination committees say at least 77 people were killed nationwide Sunday. At the United Nations, a spokesperson for the High Commissioner for Refugees said 5,000 Syrians are now fleeing the country each day. 
5,000 people are now crossing the border, uh, borders of Syria into other countries every single day. So this is really a full-on crisis uh, right at the moment. Today's figure, there's 787,000 uh, Syrians are now are registered or being assisted as refugees. If you go back to uh, 19th of December, when we issued our um, uh, Syria regional uh, response plan, uh, the figures then were 515,000. There's been a huge increase. In January alone, uh, we're talking of a 25 per cent increase in registered refugee numbers over a single month. Marine General Joseph Dunford has assumed control of the U.S.-led NATO occupation force in Afghanistan, replacing Marine General John Allen. Dunford's expected to be the last commander of NATO troops before combat operations formally end in 2014, although thousands of soldiers will remain behind. In his outgoing address, Allen said the U.S. is winning the war in Afghanistan. Afghan forces defending Afghan people and enabling the government of this country to serve its citizens. This is victory. This is what winning looks like. And we should not shrink from using these words. And I believe that Afghanistan will never again be a safe haven to terrorists that will oppress the precious people of this country and be the scourge and the plague of the world. The Obama administration plans to nominate Allen to serve as NATO's next supreme allied commander after he was cleared of misconduct in the scandal that ousted former CIA director David Petraeus. Israeli forces have dismantled another Palestinian encampment challenging settlement growth in the occupied West Bank. Palestinian activists erected tents near the town of Hebron on Saturday in a bid to protect their land. But Israeli forces quickly moved in, forcibly confronting the activists, arresting six. The encampment, dubbed Canaan Village, was the fourth in the West Bank to be shut down by Israeli troops in the past month. Bahrain's government is holding reconciliation talks with opposition parties for the first time in over a year. The negotiations last broke down in July 2011 after opposition groups accused the U.S.-backed monarchy of obstruction and failing to address their grievances. Public protests remain barred inside Bahrain in the monarchy's attempt to crush a two-year uprising. More than 100,000 people marched across Ireland on Saturday in protest of the country's austerity policies. The demonstrations were held under the banner of Lift the Burden, a call to end the public bailout of Ireland's banking debts. First Lady Michelle Obama was among the mourners at a Chicago funeral Saturday for a 15-year-old girl killed in a random shooting just days after performing at President Obama's inauguration. Hadia Pendleton was with a group of friends when a gunman fired from nearby. She'd recently returned from Washington, where she'd performed with her school marching band during the inaugural festivities. The Obama's home is about a mile from the park where she was killed. During the service, Michelle Fleger of the Greater Harvest Baptist Church and Hadia's mother, Cleo, decried gun violence and mourned the girl's death. But we're here because of an innocent victim of gun violence. Anthony and Cleo, your angel has become the face and the tragic reality of this epidemic of gun violence that is causing funeral processions of our children. You don't know how hard this really is. And those of you that do know how hard this is, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No mother, no father should ever have to experience this. On Sunday, the day after her daughter's funeral, two men were taken into custody as persons of interest in the probe into her death. In another case of gun violence drawing national attention, four people were wounded in New Orleans on Saturday when shooting erupted during the annual celebration of Mardi Gras. One of the victims is in critical condition. In Arizona, the armed posse of controversial Maricopa County Sheriff Joe Arpaio held a training session over the weekend on using guns to protect schools from attack. Arpaio recruited the Hollywood action film star Steven Seagal to train his volunteers. They used guns firing non-lethal rounds and had children come in to pose as scared students. Both Seagal and Arpaio dismissed the concerns of a group of protesters who demonstrated across the street. The most precious asset we have as a society and as human beings is our children. 
and I'm here to try to teach the Posse uh, firearms and martial arts to try to help them learn how to respond quicker and uh, help protect our children. But I don't know what you're, what these protesters are talking about. I'm going to say it again. For those protesters, we are here to protect the children. That's the main mission. They can say whatever they want, but I'm not going to stop. Secretary of State John Kerry has made his first public comments on the proposed Keystone XL pipeline since replacing Hillary Clinton earlier this month, known for being an environmental advocate while serving in the Senate. Kerry will carry out President Obama's decision on whether to approve the massive oil pipeline that critics warn will bring climate catastrophe. Speaking alongside Canadian Foreign Minister John Baird, Kerry vowed a decision in the near term. With respect to the uh, Keystone, uh, Secretary Clinton has put in place a very open and transparent process, which I am committed to seeing through. I can guarantee you that it will be fair and transparent, accountable, uh, and we hope that we will be able to be in a position to make an announcement uh, in the near term. I don't want to pin down precisely when, but I assure you, in the near term. A new intelligence report has found China and other countries are engaging in rampant cyber attacks against U.S. businesses and institutions for potential economic gain. According to The Washington Post, a national intelligence estimate warns the U.S. is, quote, the target of a massive, sustained cyber espionage campaign that's threatening the country's economic competitiveness. Attacks from China have been the most widespread, with other countries, including Russia, France and Israel. The potential cost of the hacks to the U.S. has been estimated in the tens of billions of dollars. China's attacks are reportedly directed at, quote, commercial targets linked to military technology. The news comes after The New York Times, Washington Post and Wall Street Journal all reported their networks were compromised by hacks believed to have originated in China. The Obama administration recently granted itself broad authority to carry out cyber attacks on other countries. And those are some of the headlines. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Thanks so much for watching this report from Democracy Now!, your daily independent global news hour. We don't accept advertising or corporate funding, but rather rely on donations from viewers like you. Please make your contribution by visiting democracynow.org. We need your support today to keep bringing you this hard-hitting, in-depth reporting.